Hello friends, welcome to Acharya 90 FM, your own radio, myself Tejas Vini. Today in our guest interview, we have invited Mr. Bhuvan Matre and welcome sir to our Acharya 90 FM radio station. Thanks Tejas Vini, uh, yeah. happy to be here. <laughs> he is a working past 15 to 16 years in the field of architecture. I think uh, they are having their own family business. So we will, our college, Acharya College is also having an architecture faculty. So we will be taking more inputs from Bhuvan and regarding architecture, how he studied and how he pursued all the knowledge in architecture and uh, how uh, for the future students or future generation, he will be guiding us on uh, how to take admissions, how to take uh, all the knowledge about architecture and of course how to build up buildings finally. So Bhuvan, uh, you are from Chembur, right? Yes, so born and brought up in Chembur. Uh, my father says that we are the, I am the 8th generation in the oh. house that we stay. Okay, in. that's great. So, so yeah. you have a lot of love for Chembur. <laughs> lot of love. So I have declined a lot of job opportunities in other cities, in other countries because I wanted to stay in the same house that I was brought up in. Okay, so good family bonding you are having. So how uh, how you thought of going to architectural uh, field? Because since your father wasn't in this field, that's why you pursued architecture or it was your uh, liking towards architecture? So as a kid, I wanted to be an aeronautical engineer. Oh. So I uh, pretty much was studying for IIT and uh, my goal was to get into aeronautical engineering, uh -huh. but uh, during the uh, final uh, JE exam, I sort of relaxed my own speed <laughs> and uh, so my ranking came a bit low okay. and uh, that's when, uh, you know, uh, in circumstances you make certain decisions that change your life. Uh -huh. So father has always been an architect, had been practicing for the longest time. Yeah. At that point of time, I thought it reasonable and uh, maybe the, also the right thing to do yeah. was to pursue architecture in the same college. So where uh, Your dad in, had... in no in IIT only, okay. they had uh, architecture faculty. faculty. So we uh, so I applied for architecture as an option. I got in. Uh, we I had to give the aptitude exam. Mm -hmm. uh, thanks to dad's genetics, I yeah, was yeah. able to clear the <laughs> aptitude exam without any preparation. But yeah. So then, uh, and that's how the architectural journey began for me. Yeah. And I think uh, you would put more light on how to prepare for aptitude of architecture, the test which you, are, you said just now. Right. So uh, basically, uh, the aptitude test for architecture is mainly to test the student's creativity mm -hmm. and how the student can visualize things. Mm -hmm. You know, when you are studying for engineering or for medicine, you are pretty much, uh, your study is related to text. Mm. and not to graphics as much mm. so the aptitude test is mainly to check as to how well you can draw birds eye views mm. worms eye views understand the difference between the two uh, isometric views so um, as long as the student understands the 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 theme of creating you know perspectives mm -hmm. and 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 three dimensional views how to visualize whatever and and portray on paper what uh, the uh, what he intends to, he or she intends to design uh, once you prepare yourself for that uh, pretty much the aptitude test becomes a simple thing to sort of tackle okay and uh, and what exactly we learn during the syllabus of architecture i think it's a four to five years course right so yes so uh, at least from my perspective uh, uh, the B Bachelor of Architecture program that I did was a four and a half year study program mm -hmm. and for a further half year of internship. Okay. So that totaled to five years and, and we were awarded a degree after the fifth, uh, after the completion of 10 semesters. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, and pretty much what I understand is even today uh, the, the, the format is the same. Okay. It's just that the internship period has been changed. So we had our 10th sem as the internship. Okay. But many colleges nowadays pull it back to the 9th sem and 10th sem is their thesis so that you know you get some external experience and bring it back to your thesis project. Okay. So that's I think it's a good change that has happened in the recent years after I graduated. So yeah. Yeah. So more of practical knowledge is given to the students. Prior, right? prior to touching your thesis. So yeah. yeah. Okay, and I've seen the students uh, when whenever whenever we travel in trains or buses, they carry all those uh, folders with the huge bags. <laughs> what are those that they carry? That's that's the I that's the have... that's the fun part of architecture. So huh. uh, you know, um, it's a good thing that all the teachers and faculty 
they insist that in the initial years at least you you know do not give your relationship with pen and paper Ha okay right now everything is digital you can design everything Haan. on laptop you can design it on uh, computers but uh, you know the start is pretty much to draw sketches on yeah. on paper so okay. so uh, pretty much the i think the portfolios their old portfolios and mm. and the, we used to call them drums okay so that they are, they they are pretty much carrying their t squares Mm-hmm. which is the instrument that you use to draw parallel lines okay and uh, helps in helps in drawing orthogonal or orthogonal drawings uh, while you're drafting you know plans or animations yeah. etc okay. so pretty much uh, that's what the architect's bag includes <laughs> okay so huge baggage i thought first of all uh, uh, we see all the art, art lovers they have those huge baggage with them but i think those are sign boards or making some uh, presentations on them yeah the portfolios also no so okay. you, you intend to show your friends <laughs> and and your family and your teachers the portfolio of sketches your portfolios generally depending yeah, on the, the size of sketches yeah. are are sort of large so yeah okay and after graduating or after taking the degree of architecture how the students should go for uh, off for the job or uh, how to take the knowledge in actual in practical training see so uh, you know uh, my father has always mentioned this and i uh, have seen it in my practice and i agree with most of the things what i'm i mean i i personally believe what i'm going to say now yeah is uh, architecture uh, your profession as a lawyer hmm. and your profession as a doctor okay are similar in nature although you do different kind of work mm-hmm. it is in the end a profession mm-hmm. and uh, for any profession you need training and internship you can't just learn uh, a profession from uh, you know your college or from books yeah <laughs> so you need to intern under an expert Okay. uh any doctor if you talk to any uh, uh student who is practicing medicine that person has to practice under a dentist or under a, yeah. a skilled surgeon yeah. to then himself start becoming a surgeon to get specialized similar yeah. with lawyers and hence the same uh, goes for uh, architects mm-hmm. i would always recommend you know that before pursuing higher studies uh, masters in urban planning masters in urban design hmm. masters in architectural engineering or any such courses just dive into the field work under some good architects for a period of maybe 1 1 and a half years 2 years although today's generation wants everything fast hmm. but you have a decently long enough life actually hmm. so you know uh, spend those 2 years in understanding what you really want to do hmm. and then pursue your masters over there and then you always have time i mean don't rush into starting your own firm because then when failure hits you at a younger age mm-hmm. you are not able to rebound that fast okay uh from a maturity angle yeah and past 7 years you have experience in project management and have handled the projects of for several multinational clients like uh, bank of america then city banks and procter and gamble various other names are also included <laughs> yeah. so uh, could you how was your experience handling all these companies multinational cam- companies and uh, how you uh, tackle all these uh, uh, situations so uh, my father's one mandate was that after completing architecture do not come to my firm Achha. for 5 years at least okay <laughs> so i luckily we had uh, this company called jones lang lasal Mm-hmm. It's a merger of an American and a European company. Mm-hmm. It's a big uh, uh, property consultant, international property consultant. Mm-hmm. They came for campus placements. I got hired directly from uh, IIT Roorkee into Jones Lang LaSalle. My first assignment there was Bank of America, huh. uh, and I was working uh, for uh, you know the refurbishment of their fitouts in uh, in um, Express Towers in Marabun Point. Mm-hmm. So. uh that and then from there we graduated to anz bank uh, to city bank mm. um computer associates and many such multinational companies we uh, we worked for mm-hmm. uh my job initially was not the creative angle of architecture so but more so the execution angle of architecture so okay. there was a design firm a design firm would design mm. and as a project management firm uh, for jln i used to ensure that the execution the procurement of contractors mm-hmm. the certification of invoicing the quality checks okay. of execution were yeah. done so that was my major role and uh, i sort of did that role for a period of 7 years mm-hmm. and um, it was fun working with multinationals you know the uh, the uh, 
uh, when when you work for a multinational they bring these best practices not just in terms of execution mm. but in terms of documentation from okay. from places like europe from places like america so it's very systematic you know you you mitigate your risk your chances of failure is low your attention to quality management is much better than what i've generally seen you know when we practice just within india within okay. that smaller realm acha uh, the quality management is completely different and okay. that's what sets working for a multinational apart hmm. from working just locally yeah and i think uh, now in chembur also there are very classic buildings we can see so are you thinking uh, of from your organization from your dads and your contribution towards chembur in building up such buildings have you thought of any future plans yo so we already are working on uh, my father has uh, for 40 years been constructing buildings okay. he's done multiple projects in chembur mm-hmm. mostly my father has done hospitals and nursing homes in chembur wow so okay. and multiple so i can't even count them acha uh, after that he's done a lot of uh, residential projects in ghatkopar in vile parle okay. in that area currently we've got uh, two projects going on one in ghatkopar on rb mehta marg another mm-hmm. one in chembur between the 13th and 14th road of chembur mm-hmm. so yeah i mean uh, that contribution towards chembur has not uh, reduced yeah. we are also working on an architectural and skill college huh. uh, which is the vasandada patel college mm-hmm. so we are the architects for that and uh, the building has now received cc okay. so that's that's uh, just near the priyadarshini circle okay and uh, i've uh, heard that you should have some good bonding with the politicians and all the we have to uh, sanction some uh, uh, documenting or memorandum right so uh, could you put more light on that what exactly you will have to make a relationship with the government and other other personalities so uh, you know any execution work comes with its own challenges in terms of securing approvals and yeah. those approvals are for the good actually hmm. if there's no regulation then you know anyone can make anything the whole thing that you know so many slums came out in yeah. dharavi yeah. was because at that point of time no one regulated those structures being constructed over there mm-hmm. so regulations as such are a good thing but sometimes you know these regulations become a tough thing to to circumvent hmm. and that's why you can see the government is sort of trying to work towards these single window clearances yeah. so that you know this uh, for a common man and for common people to go to multiple entities and seek approval that does not remain a challenge now our approvals have come online as well mm-hmm. so now that approvals have come online that whole avenue of you wanting or having to interact with officers has sort of reduce significantly mm. due to which uh, you know the work is break- becoming much more simpler much more speedier uh, yes i mean in the earlier days you had to have contacts with the officers etc yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, you know pretty much uh, it completely depends on architects to architects as long as you followed the rule books mm. and uh, you made design in line with the statutory regulations mm. um we haven't faced any challenges as such in terms of you know wanting to yeah. uh, seek any special attention from any uh, authority okay. as such uh, uh, the files have moved clearly uh, yeah. sort of a thing no i was asking about the tenders you need to fill and now i got huh. the word tender huh. you have to submit the tenders and we have to in that a particular time there is a time limit to submit your tender right so uh, let us just say uh, my father participated in one tender long 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 back uh, he was also awarded for the tender and he did the inauguration wherein his uh, photo was printed in the newspaper with uh, sunil dat oh, oh, on uh, oh, on the side so both of them you know i mean sunil mr sunil dat uh, <laughs> sir inaugurated the uh, okay. the the andheri railway station huh. and uh, dad was the architect for that okay. but you know these government tenders they come and they go at the the speed in which the projects happen okay. is slow yeah. the Time success uh, of completion of the project has been low mm-hmm. so after that project we decided to you know pretty much work on private projects more yeah. than uh, uh, government projects however that doesn't stop us from working for ngos and not for profits so yeah. there are a lot of projects like schools 
we are doing uh, indian registrar of shipping is another client current oh. client of ours okay. which is a not for pro- profit uh, yeah. ship licensing agency okay so we we work for those agencies uh, where we try to skip or avoid the whole uh, government tender process because mm-hmm. of the the length and time and effort to do that rather than actually focus on design <laughs> okay so we pretty much fo- try to focus more on design and execution than you know around the whole winning the project part yeah yeah, right. so, yeah. yeah i had that curiosity how you sanction the get the tenders and all that's why i asked <laughs> you that question anyway now we'll switch on uh, architect is each and it's a part and parcel of life it is there in every section like from, as you said we have to build a school we have to build a hospital architecture is required everywhere in hotel also yeah but to save the energy uh, save the uh, life of earth and to prevent pollution and uh, other whatever drawbacks the earth is facing today in that uh, context how you help uh, the architects what would you guide the architects so my uh, uh, father's firm has been called bk matra architect is gone by the name mm. the firm that i have started is called optimal entropy okay okay and what optimal entropy means uh, entropy is uh, the measurement of chaos okay and uh, uh, the second law of thermodynamics says that chaos in this whole world will yeah. only increase yeah it can never reduce yeah so it is our uh, endeavor as this firm mm. to try and optimize the increase of chaos mm-hmm. and that's where our philosophy is do not do anything any change you know do not bring any change mm. that you do not believe is mandatorily required mm. and do not stop any natural change that is naturally happening so do not put a barricade in that in that change mm. unnaturally yeah so that's uh, the principle that we use in all our designs mm. we also do approvals uh, so even in the philosophy of approvals in philosophy of making uh, feasibility reports for our clients mm. our philosophy is not to ensure that the project happens at any cost yeah our 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 uh, our philosophy is to evaluate the projects in all, in a complete all round aspect mm. and present to the client the all round financial social and uh, environmental impact that the project may bring mm. and then obviously i mean it's the client's land and the client's decision to yeah. take that step but as consultants we try and do our part in educating the client as to you know what impact their their project will have mm-hmm. on uh, on on the environment and we try to sort of control it that way even in our designs we try to consciously uh implement certain uh, aspects of you know sustainability yeah. i myself have done uh, lead uh, ap accredited professional so uh, it's a us based uh, sustainability certification program okay uh, it it trains you how to consciously design uh, sustainable mm. buildings yeah so uh, that that education has helped me in implementing that in our practice Mm-hmm. yeah as we see most of the buildings they cut the trees and they build the building instead they can u- utilize the that space in making the trees and keeping the life of the tree and they also redesign the building uh, using the trees around so lastly i would ask you uh, what would you give us a uh, advice to the future architects um I, I would say so young, yeah, <laughs> but still then. Yeah, I would say patience is uh, one of the most important things uh, as an architect. Uh, do not lose patience anywhere. I mean, uh, good things come to those who wait. Yeah. And uh, if you really like this, obviously, do not come to this field because you you've been forced by your parents. Do not come to this field because. your your friends are going to it yeah. do not come to this field because everyone thinks that okay are you are good at it so you can do it yeah. come to this field only if you feel that you have interest in doing mm. it and if you have interest in anything and you do that work no pretty much i have seen that people who excel in their work are people who are interested in that work mm. so become an architect if you really have a passion for making buildings for designing interiors for you know uh for creativity uh if that's your passion uh this is the field for you uh but patience is pretty much key i mean uh, the younger generation is i can see every, they 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 do something today and they want the result tomorrow yeah <laughs> the there are failures there are successes but 
माय एक्सपीरियंस इफ यू लव व्हाट यू डू देयर आर मोर सक्सेसेस देन फेलियर्स या सो दैट्स द एडवाइस दैट आई कैन गिव थैंक यू भुवन फॉर योर एसोसिएशन विद आचार्य 90 एफएम एंड आई विश यू ऑल द बेस्ट फॉर योर फ्यूचर एंडेवर्स एंड यू मेक गुड बिल्डिंग्स इन शिवपुर एंड ऑल ओवर द वर्ल्ड आई शुड से एंड थैंक यू फॉर जॉइनिंग ऑन आचार्य 90 एफएम थैंक यू थैंक यू मैम so friends we had today bhuvan madre in our guest interview he is a, a young advocate and practicing in chembur right chembur yeah. yes so we will be meeting up in the next interview with the next guest till then keep listening ajal 90 fm your own radio ajal 90 fm